Hello, this is Samuel Valencia, and today I'll be covering my how-to project for the class final. Uh, specifically, I'll be going over how to upgrade a personal computer into a home theater personal computer. Now, I went ahead and reused an existing computer, or a few components. I used my old motherboard, memory, power supply, and hard drive. Uh, but I needed to pick out a new case, a uh, new CPU, uh, good heat sink for that CPU, and then I had to put it all together and install the software that I wanted. Now this is the motherboard that I went ahead and used in the new system. Uh, it was an old used one that I'd used previously. Uh, it's a socket AM3 motherboard so I had to keep that in mind when I went and got my new processor. And here's the RAM from that motherboard that I used. It's 8 gigabytes of DDR3-16. And here's the hard drive that I used. I had a 1.5 terabyte hard drive. And I went ahead and put that one in the new system. And I also used the old power supply which 750 watts is more than I needed and also the excessive cables were kind of a, a bit of a pain to fit in there and I'll probably take care of that by switching over to a modular power supply at a future date and here's the case that I decided to go with now if you'll notice it's got the horizontal drive bays which was one of the main things I was looking for so that way the computer could actually fit inside of my you know entertainment center shelf area uh, I don't have uh, an optical drive in the computer yet, as you can see by the picture, uh, because of those dang power cables. They're uh, actually filling the drive base in this picture here. And once I get a module supply, then I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, this thing ran me 40 bucks, which wasn't too bad for what I was looking at, especially compared to the other HTPC cases that were out there. Now here's the CPU that I went ahead with and purchased. It's a 95 watt TDP which was one of the main things I was considering. Uh, it also had to be a socket AM3 so it would fit the existing motherboard. But the big thing was I wanted a multi-core processor that could handle any kind of uh, uh, high graphics intensity gaming and photo editing software and also watch movies on. But primarily I was worried about the heat dissipation inside of the case so I want the lower TDP so that way I can get a big heat sink to dissipate that heat. And here's the heat sink I went with. You'll notice it's a Cooler Master Gemini, and it only ran me $30, which was kind of a bit for a little fan chunk of metal, but uh, it does what I want. It operates pretty quietly and keeps the CPU relatively cool. Now here's the graphics card I'm going to use in order to get the HDMI output from the computer. Uh, you'll notice it's got an awkward pair of fans on it. Uh, those fans actually came from an Xbox 360. The existing fan on the graphics card was broken and it also operated really loudly before that so I don't want to replace the uh, fan on the card with its original one so I went ahead and I spliced the wires on this thing and with the two fans I can uh, go ahead and keep it running relatively quiet and it also cools the dang thing off super quick too now here's the case while it's empty uh, there's no motherboard or anything you can see it's got a unique layout because the space for the power supply is actually in the bottom right corner of the picture which is the front of the case not the rear of the case now here's the case with the motherboard power supply and CPU heatsink installed uh, if you'll notice the power supply is upside down which is nice because the fan there will suck all the hot air from the top of the case down and pump it out the front and here is the heatsink with the fan on it and that one blows in the same direction it blows down towards the motherboard through the heatsink and that's nice because it circulates the air all throughout the computer as it does it and then the graphics card is also installed in this picture. And here's a picture from the side showing the uh, low clearance we have above the graphics card. It's a tight fit in the case. So tight that I had to take the wires from the power supply and shove them in the drive bay. <laughs> this is the front of the case with the, uh, the front panel cover taken off. And here is the case all put together and powered on. And it actually turned on, which was great. I was worried there for a minute. <laughs> And then here the computer is registering all the RAM and I went into BIOS and I switched over the uh, graphics where it's looking for the graphics. It turned off the internal graphics, turned it to set it to look for the uh, PCIe slot and also set it to boot from my thumb drive and installed my operating system. And then after I got the operating system up and going, I went ahead and installed the software that I needed to get the computer to do what I needed it to do. And I still need to do a few more things in order to get it exactly where I want it to be. Uh, but ultimately, I was pretty happy with it only costing me $200 and getting it to do exactly what I wanted it to do. 
Thank you very much. This is Sammy Valencia, and that was how to upgrade a PC to an HPT PC.